Non-Leukemic Myeloproliferative Disorders Including Polycythemia Vera, Essential Thrombocythemia, and Myelofibrosis Etiology and Pathophysiology This diagnosis encompasses a group of conditions in which there is clonal proliferation of one or more hemopoietic components in the bone marrow. The trigger for the initiation of disease is unknown. These conditions are closely linked. Transitional forms exist and evolution from one entity to another is not uncommon. In 2005 a single point mutation in JAK2, a cytoplasmic tyrosine kinase with a key role in signal transduction, was identified in over half of the patients with myeloproliferative disorders, MPD. This is found in over 80% of those with polycythemia vera, PV and about half of those with essential thrombocythemia, ET, or myelofibrosis, MF. This finding has provided insight into the pathogenesis of MPD, as well as a simple test that is very helpful if positive. Epidemiology Polycythemia vera, or primary proliferative polycythemia. The median age at presentation is 55-60 years, but PV may occur at any age. Essential thrombocythemia The majority of patients are aged over 50 years. There appears to be an increasing incidence in younger people, especially women. Myelofibrosis This is predominantly a disease of the elderly. Clinical presentation some features are common to all three disorders. Splenomegaly, rare in ET as the diagnosis is frequently made early, often massive in MF. Hemorrhage and thrombosis, less common in MF. Headaches, dizziness, migraine, and blurred vision. Gout and hyperuricemia, uncommon in ET. Polycythemia vera. Pruritus Plethoric appearance Hypertension Peptic ulceration Myelofibrosis Metabolic disturbance, weight loss, night sweats and fever Bone marrow failure Bone pain Painful splenomegaly Investigations Polycythemia vera Hemoglobin and packed cell volume, PCV, are raised. Raised red cell mass, with low or low normal plasma volume. Half the patients have raised leukocyte and platelet counts. Raised neutrophil alkaline phosphatase. Raised serum vitamin B1 to B12 binding capacity. Raised urate Hypercellular bone marrow, a small proportion of patients have a detectable chromosomal abnormality at presentation. Low erythropoietin levels Essential thrombocythemia Raised platelet count, greater than 600x109-L Hypercellular bone marrow, with abnormal megakaryocyte clumping particularly on trephine biopsy. No consistent chromosomal abnormality is found. White cell count may be raised. Myelofibrosis White cell and platelet counts are often high, and pancytopenia occurs late. Leucoerythroblastic blood film, with characteristic red cell changes. Usually, the bone marrow cannot be aspirated and trephine biopsy shows evidence of fibrosis, Fig 33. High serum murate and lactate dehydrogenase. Differential diagnosis. It is essential to exclude chronic myeloid leukemia, usually on the basis of cytogenetics. NB. To some extent both PV and ET are diagnoses of exclusion 
and hence it is crucial to have actively sought and excluded all the causes of secondary or reactive polycythemia and thrombocythemia. The recent identification of a JAK2 mutation in over half of the patients with MPD means the criteria for diagnosis are changing and, in many cases, may be more straightforward. Treatment Polycythemia vera The aim is to maintain PCV under 45%. No treatment is curative. Prior to commencing treatment the risks and benefits of each strategy need to be carefully considered in discussion with the patient. One vena section, this is an efficient method of lowering the red cell count rapidly and can be used as maintenance therapy, particularly in young patients to avoid other therapy with greater side effects. The patient must have reasonable venous access and should realize the time commitment involved. 2. Aspirin 3. Cytoreductive therapy, this may be required in those who do not tolerate vena section or who progress despite this. A. For young patients this should be with interferon, second-line therapy. With hydroxycarbamide, hydroxyurea, or anacrylide. B. In older patients hydroxycarbamide is the first choice. Second-line therapy includes interferon, anacrylide, busulfan, or radioactive phosphorus. C. Radioactive phosphorus is effective, but in view of long-term effects should only be used for patients over 75 years old. Four other interventions, allopurinol for gout and hyperuricemia. Pruritus is difficult to control but may respond to histamine H1 or H2 antagonists, cholestyramine, or interferon. Essential thrombocythemia. Treatment is based on risk stratification. Low risk age less than 40 years and has. No history of thrombosis. Platelet count less than 1500 X109 L. No cardiovascular risk factors smoking, obesity, hypertension, or diabetes. Treat with aspirin alone or observe. High risk age greater than 60 years or has. Previous history of thrombosis. Hypertension and diabetes. Platelet count greater than 1500 X109 L. These patients should all be treated with hydroxycarbamide, hydroxyurea, and aspirin. NB. Some of these patients may be of childbearing age and should be counseled about the use of contraception. Intermediate risk, i.e. fits neither category. Treatment options include aspirin alone or aspirin and hydroxycarbamide. Myelofibrosis. This is incurable and treatment is supportive. Cytotoxic agents, splenic irradiation, and even splenectomy can be employed to reduce transfusion requirements and for symptom control. Complications All types of myeloproliferation may progress to MF or acute leukemia. Prognosis Polycythemia vera, median survival is 8-15 years. Essential thrombocythemia Median survival is 10-14 years. Myelofibrosis, in general the survival period is less than 2 years.